Hi, this is Paul into the Tech Muller channel with my progress on my build, buddy build with Switcher, on the Mark IV female. He's doing the male version. Um, he will have a similar thing as to what we're doing here with the beam. Um, and I'm going to show my process. I did send a personal email and I think uh, the way when you write something, it always doesn't, doesn't always come out the way you want it to. So having reread my email to Switcher with a photograph of this, explaining what I've done. I'm going to do it this way because I think it'd be easier because Switcher will see it as well, which is a bonus. Right. The beam, as I said I did earlier on, uh, I actually, actually done all the marking and scoring to actually give it a bit of wood grain using my trusty uh, fine tooth uh, blade, as you can see here. I use that, scoring it along to give the grain. And I scored the ends a little bit, looked sort of a circleish matter mat that I tried, but it didn't always come out well. But uh, it's still got the perfect, it's got grain there, and that's the main thing. Now for painting, and then I put the photo etch parts on. Now with a beam, I'm going to turn it slightly. With a beam, as you can see, you've got you've got metal there, yeah, and you've got metal on the other side. So it's actually packed either side with metal to also give it a bit of strength, I suppose, as well. And and it's also got metal uh, clips that come around, four-sided clips you have to fold and put on either end. Not too bad. The clips are all clips. Uh, the folds are well marked, and it was quite easy. And that's part of the kit anyway. Then I glued these bits on, the plastic um, uh, eyes on, as I'm going to call them for this. The eyes, and if I use a, um, my trusty stand, this will be alright. The eyes there, if I just point there, just there, the eyes, I glued those on in place, and then I set about painting the actual beam. Now what I did with the beam, started off, I used a, a, a Leo's Panzer Aces set 310 called Weathered Wood. And here it is, I think you should be able to see if I do that. There you go wood and I painted on both sides that, that you could actually see that were wood because it had been grained as well and and I let it dry didn't have to say about 20 minutes or so then what I did is I came in with the new I think it's new now but I've got the set anyway because it's really good stuff but I've got Vallejo metal color and this was 77.712 steel and there she is this this colour and I painted the top and the bottom of the actual metal area as you could see and that's if I tilt you you'll see what I mean there you go that metal area there with steel it and I like the colour it's really good so that was that's good I like it so and you know it's like when you like a paint you, you plug it a little bit anyway but I liked it and it came out and done really good job for me and then I let that dry a bit longer about, about 40 minutes and then I came in with the Lejo's um, umber wash which is this now I laid it I put one coat on on just on the wood either side I put it on the wood either side and I first layer one on it looked okay it darkened it up a bit let it dry it soaks into the little cuts you did with the razor saw which is really good it does that and then I did then I let it dry and I went in with a second coat which is giving it its color now once it dries it stays like that it's, it does look really it, it looks quite nice it looks like a bit of really old weathered wood that's been stuck out in the back of a tank for quite some time so that was that um, then the metal bits I run some rust round the bolts. I don't know whether you're going to see that. I'm going to zoom in a bit more. I might be able to if I pull that slightly forward into the middle and come down a bit more. There you are. You're not going to see it too well, but all the nuts and bolts have got a bit of rust going around them to give it that bit of effect. It's been in a bit of water, water soaked in, rusted the bolts, but not affected the metal too much. And then to give it a bit of a cloudy look, look to the metal, I brushed over with black wash from this of Leho color 73201. It's another wash, and I've just done that on the metal areas and into the screw bolt screw heads a little bit so they actually showed a bit of detail there. So that was this one here, which is Vallejo. I mean, you can read it because it's just, there we go. It's the white label. It's not going to, it's reflecting too much. It's a shiny label anyway. So it's Vallejo and basically it's black wash. Really good stuff. Anyway, but I did it on both sides of the metal. It gives it a mist, uh, misty look and it doesn't, it takes away some of the shine of the steel, which is what I was aiming for. And that done a really good job on that. So I'm happy with that. I'm all saying that. So I'm all saying I'm happy with the something. But anyway, but I am. So there you go. So I'm going to put that back down now. 
right here we go so what I did then I said about and this was the fun bit uh, and I'm not going to call it fun it wasn't fun but it was nice when you get to a certain stage when you think you've got to get ready for painting what I did then is I used nine links between on the every every set of chains so nine links if I pull that bit straight out there I used nine links there and there all every set of chip link you can see has got nine on it and what I had to do is I had to cut into each link with this there's a there's a there's a connection bit and I can't show it anything but when you look at the chain there's a bit where the, the, the link has actually been joined together and it's been sort of soldered I suppose in some way or, or, or magnetized done or whatever but basically it's joined together I use these snips to actually snip it and this is the dodgy bit really once I've got a slit there I then took these and not going onto the blade side, I put the link onto there and pulled it down so it got to the thicker part of the blade and pulled it down a little bit, slowly but surely, and it opened up the gap in the link, which allowed me then to slide it through the plastic pieces you can see on, and this is what I did for every sit join you can see where it goes to the plastic loops, including where it jumps onto these actual track fasteners uh, that go onto the tracks to actually secure it when the vehicle's being do, doing its detrenching process. So, after that, what I did then is I got my pliers, really, which are these are the Tamiya ones, but basically the pliers, and then with and I had to use one of these because my eyes are really close up weren't too fantastic, so I used the Optivisor on the number five setting, perfect size for me, and pulled it down until I got the gap, and then I would go into there. And I've already opened up, if I point to this, I've already opened up this one, ready to do the job. It's not completely open, because it, otherwise it falls off. And I've got that one ready as well, Whoops, because they're magnetic, because I've been on the magnetic clip. There's an opening there, and an opening there. So once I've painted this completely, I will be able to then, I'm going to do steel all over these, and then put a bit of black on it as well, a bit of the old black wash on it to give it a bit of a, a, di a slightly different uh, look to it. And then when it's when the tank's completely finished, I can actually join that to there, that to there, where it comes from underneath the beam that runs across the top of the building, because it actually comes up, if I show this, might be better if I do it this way. Because you can see what I mean there. It's give, not giving me many links, it's giving one, two, three, four links. I've gone further, because when I was at Bobbington, I think there was a few more links. And to be honest, I'm not really worried, because I think if these are put together, they're, they're going to be different links. Some vehicles, it seems to be going a long way down, and some things don't. So I've gone for nine links per each one, and each one of those. And, and to me, it looks the part. And once it's up there and hanging on the back of the bed, because remember, this beam is heavy, so it'll be hanging back on these chains, and this a bit around the front, underneath that rail that runs across the top of the building. I can see that. I'll get the car. There you go. You can see where they position it back there. Now I've seen this beam on some photographs where it's actually right up the middle here, so it's sitting up here past the hatch. So it can actually be put there and down, hanging down, or further. But I'm most probably going to go for the lower part, but I'm going to, not going to join it there. I'm going to join it just behind a bracket because there's a bracket there. You have to put it behind the bracket to actually get it to lay, and that's what I'm going to do. So, but I'm, once I've got it in, I'm going to pull that beam back so it's tall. These chains go taut. And then I'm going to put a drab of my um, rocket glue underneath the beam and stick it onto the rail so it doesn't move anymore. And the rocket glue is what I stuck all those brass bits on and it seemed to hold it really nicely. You just put it in position, you fiddly, we leave it there. I pushed it on with the point of this bleeding up, this is the file, pointed, pushed it onto the brick to hold it. But of course, without the magnifier, I wouldn't have been able to do that. But with it, without the magnifier on now, I can see it perfectly. But the point is, when you're working on it, it's quite small and fiddly. So that's basically what I did there. So I'm really ready to paint in and then ready for the for the actual file and then we're offering up to the model afterwards. Now, what I can say is, my paint cum for the colour that uh, for, for Ming says for their Mark V. So if it's for the Mark V, it would be the same colour that was used on the Mark IV. Uh, from World War One, and it's called uh, Realm 70, 79 on the front, but it's actually called um, 70.876 Sam Brown. Now, I had to mix this quite well with thinners, obviously, because this is a brush painting part for their military set. But it's uh, but it once you put a bit of thinner in, it comes on on really nice. Now, what I did is I put a base coat of this all over the tank, and uh, not another light light mist in all over. Didn't lose any detail from the previous colour, obviously, because you are putting this paint on when you're spraying quite thinly. Um, 
And then what I did is I pre-shaded with a slightly lightened colour in places, like down the panel lines of the tank as well. So that's what I've done, and so that's the colour I've used on my tank. And I'm just going to bring it into focus, hopefully it's coming into focus. Here we go, and this is a colour. Now I'm much more happier with this, it's more, I don't know if it's going to show up in this, but it is a more, and it's not, no, it's not going to come up really nice at all. It looks like the brown it was before, but it's not, it's actually sort of a ready tint to it. And it's, it's the actual, um, it's the actual white balance, so I've got to play with that. Anyway, so, but when you look at the vehicle away from the camera, it's really nice. I don't know if I can play with the white balance. I must probably do another short video after showing that in a second when I finish this. So that's what how far I've got with that. So apart from the dangerous bit with this, but it wasn't dangerous for me because all I did was held it like that and put the chain link, if I can get a chain link. Um, have I got any chain link left of that one? I have in the packet, I don't want to get it out, but uh, all I did was get a chain like link like this. Oh, there it is, and it was in, on the end of a chain, and I pushed it on there like so. And that's going to show it. Can't even see the link on there, can you? Because it's so small. But basically, I put it on there, and then I because it was linked to a template, I pulled it down, and that actually opens the gate wider to allow you to put it onto the plastic clips. And it's quite an easy task then to use the pinchers to pinch it close again. Go and careful you don't break the plastic bar, but if you go nice and gently, it gradually moves slowly and closes. And then it was done. So that's how I did it. I've got four open links sitting over there. Um, if I show, I don't want to show you, let's see what I mean. There's an open link there. Um, you can see that was right open. And that was what I was going to use to attach it, but I found out I could do it quite easily on the end of this and still do the same thing without having an extra link. So that will eventually be over there. For, oh, excuse me. Like so. No, magnetic, you see, because I've got a magnetic uh, tool holder, you get a bit of magnetism there, but not too much of a problem. So I could use a bit of cocktail stick, might help a little bit. There you go. Cocktail still, stick. There we go, if I come out like that, there you go, get that at the end. That will eventually end up going to there, and the same with that one. But uh, you can't do that until it's on the vehicle in the position you want it. So that is my unditching log and it's a beam sorry which is made of oak and it's, it's finished as far as i'm concerned apart from doing the chain painting which i'm going to do tonight if i can i've already painted the tank this set next base color and done it a bit of pre-shading and i'm going to try and sort the white balance out now from this the camera ready for another short video after this which will be a separate one but explaining just a little bit why i did it anyway so hopefully switcher the switcher that that's going to solve my what i was talking about by leaving an open link uh, in that position, ready to, uh, an open link and the link wider to actually attach to the, the plastic clip. Because if you cut the plastic clip, you've got to be very careful you don't break it plastic. So I thought this way was far by the most superior way because you're only opening a metal link. And if it does break, I've got a spare cut of links laying over there that are ready to go to replace it. So anyway, so that is the end of my little short video on my um, my um, de 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 um, detrenching beam. Uh, de ditching beam sorry uh, from from the kit and uh, i hope it was m more explanatory than what i think it was but but so uh, that's the way i got the wood look effect by the scraping across with the old the old um fine razor torque getting the old getting the old um uh, wood grain in there going in with the first color on the actual wood itself was um, um not wrap one that's the tank was a uh, weathered wood from panzer aces that's 310 the color is that's it. Then I went in after that uh, with the metal colour for the actual metal parts of it, including the end clips as well. And that was steel, and that's 77, Vallejo 77.71, 722, sorry, 772. So that's 77.712, let's get it clearer. And that's a steel colour. Then what I did then is I come in with my umber wash, which is another Vallejo um, wash which is called uh, uh, which is a number is 73.203 that's a number wash that was a bit well and I, and I did one coat first it was still not dark enough for my liking so I let it dry and went in with a second time and as you can see the wash went into the grooves where I'd actually scraped with the razor saw and but it was lighter on the outside so you got that sort of two tunnel effect and by two layers it seemed to give it more than more than two tones to me when you look at it and um, then after that on the metal areas, I went in with uh, black wash again, painted over top by hand. I'd done this all by hand. I didn't bother reverting to the spray break 
um, uh, airbrush. So, and this was um, again, this was 73.201 uh, black wash, and I done that all in the screws and bolts areas, and but painted it over the area and let it dry, and and basically it gave it that what I think is a nice sort of tonal look to the metal, where it looks as if it's the weather's got to it and it's just fading in different ways. That's what I did anyway. So hopefully, um, that's um, there. You go. I'll put that back up there. I've got to put this away safely, ready for paint in a minute. So hopefully that explains it better than what I did to Switcher anyway, in regards to the email I sent him. He did see the photograph, but that's what I meant by nine links there, nine links there, nine links there, nine links there. And I think once you attach it behind the bolt, that's going to hang down quite nicely down behind there. I'm going to go to the, on when I put it on my tank, I'm not going to put it in the bracket it's still got down there, because I don't see what their point, I'm going to go to the attaching point further up. And, and I'm even tempted, I'm even tempted to have it further up the vehicle so it's hanging back here. The reason for that is I've seen a few vehicles with it sitting about here, the beam sitting over this area, not over the back so much. There you go, that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, doing that uh, paint, finally finishing off these bits of the painting tonight. And, and I'm doing another short video in a second showing the colour of the vehicle. And hopefully I can sort the white balance down as well. Anyway, thank you very much. I think that might have went on a bit longer than what I thought it did. So 12 minutes and uh, a bit, just coming up to 13 minutes. So it weren't too bad. And I'm sorry if I waffled. Thank you very much. And this is me saying bye.